Hello, so now we can add some shape and sequence to the skirt. This dress looks nice and everything, but in the film, Harley's dress is a lot more isometric. We've still to add sequins to the skirt, but I would suggest doing this first. The reason is that you might be doing extra work because you'll put sequins onto the skirt and then you'll be cutting some of them back off again. So this makes much more sense to me. I'm essentially going to give this dress a haircut. So to start, I look at reference photos and then using some of the ball-headed pins, I go around the skirt and mark out where I think I want to cut. You don't want to cut too much material off a row to then see the sewing on the row underneath. My row 1 and row 2 are quite close together. I think that's a good thing because row 1 in the film is quite short. To cut the tool, I take my fabric scissors and then cut just below the pins. If I was to cut above the pins, the rows might end up too short. It's a good idea to protect the other rows underneath when you're doing this. So I hold my scissors at roughly 90 degrees and I use my left hand to hold the tool row up and protect the fabric underneath. The main thing I noticed about looking at Harlequin's dress is that the left side seems to sweep up the way and it seems to be slightly longer on the right hand side. So I use that as my basis of cutting this whole thing. The best thing you can do in this situation is work from an image that you've found of her dress. A good tip when doing this is to constantly stand back and look at your dress. Sometimes we can get caught up in what we're doing and it's great to step back every so often and just take in the work that you've done and what you've still to do. Something I feel which can often be overlooked when making a costume is how the garment actually moves. As this is a dressmaking fabric, I really want to see how it reacts on a windy day. I have a floor fan and I aim it at the garment. I'm surprised to see there's not too much movement. Once I'm happy with the front, I continue cutting around the sides of the dress and then the back. Another aim of mine when cutting this tool was to make the ends look a little more raggedy. Obviously she's just come out of a fight scene and there's going to be some rips and tears in there. So instead of making them like a straight line, I cut little indents in it so it's not so straight. It can also help to not cut every single layer of the two rows at a time. I sometimes cut just some of the top layers so that it leaves the bottom layers sticking out a little. Doing this I feel makes the dress a bit more interesting to look at also. So now I've finished cutting the skirt and I'm really happy. I definitely think it looks a bit more isometric now. It looks like the tool is sort of sweeping up towards the left hand side. The difference between adding sequins and rhinestones to the skirt rather than the top is that we're gluing directly onto tool. I would suggest using baking paper for underneath. The baking paper protects the tool layer underneath. It also creates sort of a shelf that the glue can sit on. The glue does not stick to the baking paper. I found using this method was a lot cleaner, but the advice I'd give you is to use lots of little bits of baking paper. You can see in the start I use quite a large piece. But further down the line you'll see the pieces I'm using are a lot smaller. So again, the glue of choice is E6000 Fabrifuse. Next you would have to decide which layer to glue the sequins and rhinestones to. I did some quick tests by sticking some loose sequins and rhinestones behind the tool and I found that gluing it to layer 5 meant there was 4 layers in front. This is the same idea as the top. The top has 4 layers in front also. I think gluing it onto layer 5 was the most consistent idea with the dress. With the baking paper underneath, I add little glue dots to the tool. I then add glue to the sequins or rhinestones that are to be glued on and attach. I give them a little tap with the tweezers just to ensure that there's a bond. Again, try not to use too much glue or you'll end up with excess around what you've glued. I keep gluing these on and build a design around what I already have. I can now show you why the smaller pieces of baking paper are better. You can fit them better underneath and glue more at a time. The challenging thing about gluing on the sequins and rhinestones is that they need to dry flat. This means I can only do several sections at a time, wait 8 hours for it to dry and then complete another section. To tackle this, I glue whatever I can on one of the rows, I skip the next row and then start gluing the row underneath. This gives the parts I'm gluing a lot of space to dry. 
without there being fabric in the way. To keep tool out the way as well, I use either pins or clips. Because we're gluing in sections and it takes 8 hours to dry, as you can imagine this can be a lengthy process, so I'd set yourself aside a week to be able to do the whole skirt. I glued the sequins on in about 5 sittings and it was about 4 hours for each sitting. Once the glue has dried and you can remove the baking paper, you might find that there's little bits of glue sticking out like this. To get rid of them, I take some nail scissors and carefully cut them off. Nail scissors are perfect for this, as they're small enough and sharp enough to gain the control that you need. To cut off these very small bits of excess glue, I would not recommend pulling the glue off, as you can often pull off too much glue from underneath. After adding the sequins, this is what my dress looked like. I knew when designing how I was going to make this dress, that I really wanted to have the crimped texture on this skirt. When sourcing materials, I did look for crimped tulle, but I could not source any, so I decided to make them myself. I used to crimp my hair quite a lot, and I have this old set of crimpers. The temperature on the crimpers goes up to 200 degrees, and the melting point of nylon is 220 degrees Celsius. So I did do a quick test to see if it would melt the nylon. However, I found that it was absolutely perfect to do this. The only thing that occurred was that there were some toxic fumes coming off. So in order to make myself safe while doing this process, I wore a respirator. I also did it in a well-ventilated space. To get the effect, I decided to crimp the top three layers of tulle. Layer 5 obviously has the sequins and rhinestones, and I left layer 4 as it was. I take the crimpers as close as I can to the seam line, and I press them down. I leave this for roughly 12 seconds and release. I then move along the skirt and repeat. Obviously the skirt goes in a circular shape so I'm always making sure that my crimpers are about 90 degrees to the seam line. Don't worry if you slightly overlap an area you've already done. One thing I want you to ensure if you do this is make sure you know what your base material is. Mine is nylon and I know what the melting point of nylon is. You might have a different fabric. So you should always, always do a test and make sure you wear a respirator when you do it. You don't want to start doing this and then discover it's not the best solution and you've already ruined your dress. I've obviously crimped the top three layers in the same way. If you see the top part of this diagram, this is what I have now. But the bottom diagram is what I actually want. I want to make the crimp less uniform so that the two layers are lifted up and it creates more volume and shape. I obviously don't need to redo layer 1 or layer 3, but if I re-crimp some of layer 2, it means that I can move some of these crimps along and it will create more volume. So I do go ahead and re-crimp the second layer. However, I don't do every single bit, but I do several parts and then I can look at it and see what it looks like and re-crimp other bits if need be. This is much quicker than doing every layer individually because you're only crimping two layers and not three. If you're crimping the tool underneath, what you really need to watch here is that you don't crimp onto the sequins. If you let heat go onto the sequins and rhinestones, you'll find that they might melt and even burn slightly, so you don't want that. Once I was finished, this is what the skirt looks like. I really love the look of it, however, I do feel like the bottom rows need done as well. So I go back and I crimp layer 6, layer 7 and layer 8 for each row. Again, I leave layer 4 and layer 5 untouched. Once the skirt is fully crimped, it looks like this. Here I am posing with it whilst I was making the underskirt. Now you can move on to tutorial 5, where we make the armbands, the bows and weather the dress. <laughs>